These are the notes for the relearn and retake on the 9.5 to 9.7 quiz. We took over uh, rational equations and rational functions. So for number one, our job is to determine horizontal and vertical asymptotes of this expression. Uh, important that we show work and explain answers. So we know that our vertical asymptotes are going to happen when this expression, the denominator, is equal to zero. So I'm going to set that equal to zero, x squared minus 3x equals zero. I can factor the left side into x times x minus 3. So x equals zero or x minus 3 equals zero. So I have vertical asymptotes at x equals zero and x equals three. My horizontal asymptote, I'm just comparing the degree of the numerator and denominator. If the degree, the highest exponent in the numerator is greater, then there is no horizontal asymptote whatsoever. If the degree in the denominator is greater, then the horizontal asymptote happens at y equals zero. And that's the case here, x squared is greater than this is a degree zero. If the degrees are the same, we make a, um, a fraction out of the coefficients. So those are my vertical asymptotes. That's my horizontal asymptote. In number two, state the domain of the function in set builder notation and show work. Well, what we're really looking for here is to show the values that are restricted from the domain. So we're saying, where are the vertical asymptotes? That's basically what this question is asking. So we know we can factor this. x squared minus 2x minus 3. So I have x minus 3, x plus 1. Didn't really talk our way through that because we've solved quadratics like that so many times before. So these are the locations where the vertical asymptotes live, and that means these values are restricted from the domain. So our self-builder notation looks like this. X is an element of the set of real numbers such that X is not equal to negative one, X is not equal to three. So this is the work, and that's the self-builder notation. All right, let's go on to solving rational equations. So one over X equals six over five X, plus one. I need a common denominator here. I have an x, I have a 5x, and then this, this, I, this can be whatever I want it to be. It's one, so anything over itself is one. 5x already contains x as a factor, so I need to multiply the numerator here by five, and the denominator here by five. So that gives me five over 5x. This is already in my common denominator, six over 5x, and then 1 is the same as 5x over 5x. So now that these are all in the same denominator, I can write just the numerators as an equation. 5 equals 6 plus 5x. Oops. So if negative 1 equals 5x, divide by 5. then my solution for x is negative one-fifth. The last thing I would have to do is double check to make sure that that's not going to create um, an extraneous answer. If uh, x was equal to one-fifth, do I have zero in the denominator? And that's not a situation here. Uh, I would only have zero in the denominator in this case if, if x itself was equal to zero, and that's not a problem. All right, let's look at this rational equation. One over m squared minus m plus one over m equals five over m squared minus m. So if I think of m squared minus m as m times m minus 1 factor, right? I can see that this already contains this as a factor. So my middle term, I need to multiply the numerator and denominator by m minus 1. So 1 over m squared minus m plus m minus 1 over m squared minus m equals 5 over m squared minus m. So then 1 plus m minus 1 equals 5. The 1 and the negative 1 are opposites. They equal 0. 
m is 5. 25 minus 5, 5, 25 minus 5. So there's no case where m equals 5 creates 0 in the denominator. So I'm good to go. That stands as my solution. And then our last example is going to be a variation problem. y varies inversely with x. So the first thing we need to do is write an equation for that. So an inverse function is y equals k over x. Then we're given values for x and y, and we need to find k. So y is 40 when x is 15, 16 rather. So now 16 times 40 is going to be equal to my k value. So that's 640. Now, we rewrite this equation with our k value listed, y equals 640 over x. And now we're asked to find x when y is negative 5. So negative 5 x equals 640. You'll go to your calculator. 640 divided by negative 5, and you get a negative 128 for your solution. So you can use these notes, go ahead and flip the page, and continue on and uh, work through the retake quiz questions, and you can hand that in to me when you're done.